Thank you. The next speaker is the Honorable Chief Whip of the Opposition, Honorable Mazzone. Mr. President, House Chairperson, Members of Parliament, my fellow South Africans, I am sure that you have all heard of Karen. She is the lady that always asks to speak to the manager. Well, Mr. President, I am Natasha, and I am speaking to the manager. I like to think of myself as a positive person, always seeing the glass half full. Even during the lockdown period, when the glass was completely empty, but I now find myself finding it very difficult to feel positive about anything. I am bombarded by stories of death, corruption, poverty, deliberate racial baiting, and a failing economy, not to mention a barrage of constant lies. Yesterday, South African learners and teachers went back to school. Not a single one of them even had the faintest hope of protection from the COVID virus, never mind the variants, because not one of them had been vaccinated. What I find the most disturbing as I look around me is that there are only 50 members in this house while the rest of the country is expected to go back to work and back to school. Parliament remains in isolation. This is wrong on every level. The Parliament of South Africa must be recalled in full and only those in the high risk category should join virtually. You see, this is what happens when a country enters into a state of disaster that it's not designed for. You land up with a prime minister and a president. And I think we must all be honest. Minister Dlamini Zuma always said that she would run the country, and now she in fact does. We are not even consulted as a parliament. The act is just extended at will. The very minute we realized the hard lockdown was coming, and coming fast, the DA leader John Steenhuizen called his shadow cabinet together and instructed me to chair a meeting and ensure that every shadow minister writes to their ANC counterpart. We did just that. We offered our complete and unwavering support. Let me list who responded to these letters of goodwill. Not one single minister. So much for standing together and what a crying shame. I've thought long and hard this week about how we can make our offer more appealing to the president and how he can actually take us up on our offer. I came to the following conclusion. Those appointing these commissions that we constantly hear about have a conflict of interest, and that is why no one is ever arrested. Mr. President, this includes you too, sir. You were the head of the governance, of government business at the zenith of state capture. You were the head of the ANC's Cater Deployment Committee, overseeing the appointments of people like Brian Malefe, Michelle Koko, Dudu Mayeli, to name but a few. So what do we do now? We as the DA think that we shouldn't establish a national anti-corruption council. We think that it's just more talk and even less action. So I say this to you, Mr. President. Tumamina, send me. I will fight it again. Let the opposition sit on a committee that ensures that those responsible for corruption are brought to book. Show that you are the President of the Republic of South Africa and not the President of the ANC. We have given you too many chances. You have let us down too many times. We don't believe you anymore and we simply cannot trust you anymore. Can we just take a moment to appreciate some of the bizarre things that we've seen in the last week. We now have the Nkandla Tea Party happening, where pay back the money has changed to please pass the scones and jam. We have a defunct, non-existent faux army structure who purchased their uniforms at a co-op who are now threatening to protect Jacob Zuma if he's arrested. The Premier of the Eastern Cape sits here today instead of fixing hospitals where people are being gnawed at by rats and where he bought scooters instead of oxygen tanks. How possibly dare they? But no one knows where the power starts and no one knows where the power ends. We have a wannabe Don running around in dark glasses, getting in and out of state vehicles, saying that the Constitution isn't sacrosanct. How absolutely dare him. Let's make one thing very clear. These are acts of treason. 
These are threats to the sovereignty of our country. But we have a president who has no power to act against these threats because he himself has no idea where the power lines start and where the power lines end. The most vulnerable of society were lining up begging for their mere pittance to survive just a few weeks when a very loud, cruel minister, while emulating the behavior of John Foster, was sitting inside an armored Nyala vehicle instructing police to open water cannons on them. How absolutely dare she! But nothing will be done to her. Because once again, no one knows where the power starts and no one knows where the power ends. South Africans honestly now only know how to say, how absolutely dare you. Ridiculous lockdown laws have decimated local businesses, destroyed the South African economy and left us in mourning for lives and livelihoods. Drive around any city in this country and there are empty shops everywhere. Restaurants and hotels have halved their staff, the supply chain has been broken, alcohol and tobacco sales went underground and a black market thrived. Some people loved the prohibition period. Let's face it, lots of tax-free money was collected. But you see, in Freyne, there's a lot of space for a very nice wine cellar, so it doesn't affect everyone. How absolutely dare you? My favorite poet, Dylan Thomas, once wrote, the hand that signed the paper filled the city. Five sovereign fingers taxed the breath, doubled the globe of dead, and halved the country. These five kings did a king to death. Mr. President, you dare not bear and be the sign and the hand that signs this country to death. The people had hope in you. We had hope in you. I had hope in you. But I can tell you now, without a shadow of a doubt, the Ramaphoria has well and truly worn off. We now all know where the power starts and where the power stops. And we can guarantee you, Mr. President, it is not with you. Thank you.